Shepherd, I shall not want. <laughs> he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy follow all days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Are you all excited to be here in the presence of, uh, of our Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, amen. Um, I want church to kind of, you know, relax a little bit. I know we are in the presence of God. We have that um, tendency to be like, okay, when we are in the presence of God, we have to be like very serious and, you know, and God wants us to have fun, enjoy our life. So just relax. Yeah, let's enjoy our worship uh, to God and because He's with us, right? Amen. 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 Do you really believe that? Amen. Do you really believe God is with us? Amen. Okay, so let's enjoy the time. He's, go he's with us here. He's going to touch some uh, few. I mean, he's going to touch everybody. But um, he's looking for people who are really looking for his touch. For uh, his, his fellowship and his communion. So let's focus on that. Okay, he's with us. He's sitting in one of our seats. We cannot see him, but he's here. Okay? Um, I, I want to start with a with a, you know, a small joke. Um, you know, um, they say a man has to prepare the coffee in the morning. You know, usually like in, in India, like usually women prepare coffee, right? But the Bible, somewhere in the Bible says a man should prepare coffee. Do you know where? Hebrews. <laughs> Did you get it? Or oh, maybe some people didn't get it. He bruised. So, it was just a joke. Just a joke. Don't force men tomorrow. Hey, we said in church, we have to, <laughs> you have to make coffee now. <laughs> right? So, anyway, just a joke. Um, but I wanted to kind of bring this uh, uh, psalms to your attention. Because this is kind of a favorite psalm for everybody. Everybody knows this psalm. You know, everybody talks about it. And it's also kind of a very popular psalm now. Even I think um, non-Christians know this psalm because what happened is after 911, uh, 9/11, not one 911, 9/11, um, George Bush quoted from this uh, this psalm. You know, so that's why it became very very popular. Everybody know, knows uh, this psalm. But as Christians, this is one of our very very popular, very comforting kind of psalm. And, and you know this is um, written by David. David is one of my favorite, favorite characters in the Bible. He's, he's I feel like sometimes I, I relate so much uh, to him, you know, sometimes with the way he speaks, the way he uh, talks about God and all that. Um, and the first verse itself, the Lord is my shep shepherd and I shall not want. That's the title of this this psalm. That is, and that's what I'm going to say. I'm thinking, David is just saying, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. That is a the theme of this, that, that psalm. And then, and then he goes on to explain why he thinks that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. You know, pay attention to the word my in there. Because during those days, I mean even now, I think a lot of people do not uh, look at God as if... Um, you know, he's personally connected to us. We look at him as if he is kind of a, he's kind of a king up above there. And he kind of takes care of, you know, the, maybe the general masses, right? He does not have any personal connection. Uh, like kings and leaders and, and uh, presidents. Like, you know, like Joe Biden is the president of the United States. But I cannot get directly in connection with, with president, can I? No, it's very difficult. And kind of that's the concept we all have when we talk about God. We think that, okay, God is up there, 
And then when you need him, he will kind of send his angels or send his messengers, send somebody. You know, there's no personal connection, um, you know, with, with God. That's the concept that, or most religions, that's what we, we think. He's up sitting up there. But David here is saying, the Lord is my shepherd. He's trying to create that personal connection that he has with God. You know, he's not saying that, hey, the Lord is everybody's shepherd. Of course it is. But he's talking about his own direct connection with, with, with God. And that's what, you know, I really was touched that this morning. I'm like, wow, this is what we should all be thinking every time about God. And, you know, when God created Adam and Eve, that was the purpose. That was the main thing that God, when God created Adam, what was he doing every day? He wanted to come and talk to Adam. He wanted to come and have fellowship with Adam. But, you know, as any dear friend, what happens when he did not obey God and when he disobeyed God, God separated himself from him. Because, you know, he was upset with Adam that he did not trust him when he told him, do not do this. You know, hey, this is not good for you. He didn't trust God at that time. And, you know, he listened to, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the serpent's ideas and Eve's ideas and then he went with it and God was upset and so from then on God has been looking for people to have that direct connection and so David like you see in David's life you see he had a very very strong personal connection with God you know here he's talking about his own experience I mean usually when we talk about like big people or the, the connection that we we have with our you know maybe uh, influential people, um, we don't talk about that. He's he's my shepherd. Like you know, hey, you know, he's he's a leader. You know, he will. You know, take, but he is saying this because he has personal experience as a shepherd, right? Because before he became king, he was what? He was a shepherd, and he that is what his uh, experience is. And so he's saying that just like when I took care of my flock, God is my shepherd. Okay, before we go into the details of this, in this um, passage, in this psalm, um, there are seven things that I wanted to kind of touch on. The first thing is, verse one is, he knows me personally. Second one is, he provides for me. Third one is, in, uh, he restores me in verse three. Uh, and in verse, uh, the second part of verse three, he guides me. And then in verse four, he protects me. And then in the uh, second part of four, uh, verse 4, he comforts me. And then in conclusion, he says, he exalts me. So there are seven things. Knows me, he provides for me, restores me, guides me, and protects me, comforts me, and exalts me. See, um, when David was a shepherd boy, he, you know, he had to face so many difficulties and, uh, and, you know, and, and troubles to kind of take care of his sheep. I don't know how many of you know in like in India and the Middle East when they take care of these uh, flock, it is not like easy to uh, manage the flock, you know, it is not easy to find, especially in the Middle East, like, you know, this, when D David was a shepherd, it's mainly a desert area. There is not easy to find a uh, good pasture, a good, I um, mean, you know, a place of water for this, this sheep. So he knows the difficulty. So he's connecting all that into his own life. You know, um, and, um, and also the dangers that, that he had to face. And, you know, I will, I'll come to that later. Um, so the, the first thing, what, I'm, what David is exhorting us, or David is trying to, to tell us, is that God is our personal caregiver. He will, you know, even though we are kind of part of, we feel like we are part of the flock, he will take care of us personally. Okay. Um, and then um, the second one in verse two, he says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures and he leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. So one of the things that, um, you know, I was thinking lately is, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm living by myself here, right? You know, my family is there. And so, um, sometimes it's difficult to really decide on, on really what to, what to even eat, right? Because, you know, there's so much food available, but, 
you don't even know like what is really good for you or or you know which which place to go and eat and sometimes you know you debate on salads or you know burgers or you know things like that so some one thought that came to my mind this morning is like a shepherd you know he the shepherd knows what the sheep really needs right what food what you know which pasture you and if you are a good shepherd you are always out there and you know the areas that is like you know seasonally comes green and you know so the same way i'm thinking our god even in minute things like you know what food to eat you know he leads he will guide us and he will lead us i mean do, i mean sometimes i think but we never think like that right we think that okay hey that's not a, his why, why why should he worry about that right but i thought this mind today like hey if he is my shepherd he knows what i should be eating so every minute detail that's what i was trying to say every minute detail of your life is uh, is god is going to take care of it okay and then um, the other thing is in verse 3 the lord is my shepherd because he restores me i, I want you to turn to a, another passage in the bible first uh, samuel um, chapter 17 verses 26 to 37 somebody if you can help me uh, read that verse th- those verses first samuel verse um, chapter 17 verses 26 to 37 then david spoke to the men who stood by him saying what shall be done for the man who kills this philistine and takes away the reproach from israel for who is this uncircumcised philistine that he should defy the armies of the living god keep going and the people answered him in this manner saying so shall it be done for the man who kills him now eliab the oldest brother heard when he spoke to the men and eliab's anger was aroused against david and he said why did you come down here and with whom have you be have you left those few sheep in the wilderness I know your pride and insolence of your heart for you have come down to see the battle and David said what have I done now is there not a cause then he turned from him towards another and said the same thing and these people answered him as the first one did keep going till 37 okay. now when the words which David spoke were heard they reproached him to Saul and sent for him and David said to Saul let no man's heart pro- of faith because of him your servant will go and fight with the philistine and Saul said to David you are not able to go against this philistine fight with him for you are a youth and he a man of war from his youth but David said to Saul your servant used to keep his father's sheep and when a lion or a bear comes and took a lamb out of the flock i went out after it struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth And when it arose against me I caught it by its beard and struck it and killed it your servant has killed both lion and bear and this un- uncircumcised Philistine will be like one one day one of them seeing he has defied the armies of the living god moreover david said the lord who delivered me from the paw of lion and from the paw of bear he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine and so also said to david go and the lord be with you thank you so see you see here in this passage you know he was just a boy at this time you know you know he's trying to go to fight against goliath but he's going to fight against goliath not because he is powerful or he is like you know he has any talents or skill he was a shepherd boy but you know what makes him courageous and strong is because of his belief that god is with him all the time i mean even when he was with the with the sheep a lion comes against him i mean how many of us will kind of if a lion comes against us we can have the courage to go against the lion none of us will do that but david is a is a is a peculiar character he knows that god is with him and he is complete trust that even if a lion is coming against him he has the god will give him the courage to tear it apart and kill it same with the bear And so that is the same faith he's having when he's facing this Goliath. He's like, "Hey, I don't care whether how big he is or how tall he is. You know, I really don't care. Just like God was with me to go and, you know, or or help um recover the sheep or the lamb that was attacked by lion and the bear, 
I'm going to restore or I'm, I'm going to, uh, you know, help, you know, restore the, the, the faith in people. I'm going to help Israel recover from, from this shame, you know. So that is what he's, what he's saying. So he was not, he didn't become uh, more courageous or more, um, you know, more, more powerful because he became a king. Even when you see, like when he became king also, you will see God, uh, David is always reliant on God. You know, he had armies. He had a lot of people. But always, he never went to war. He never did anything without God telling him what to do. So sometimes, you know, we are living in a world that is always kind of promoting our own skills and talents. Because that is how we succeed in life. And we as Christians, we have to be very, very careful not to kind of lose trust in God. And then tr start trusting in our, in our own abilities and our own skills. You know, especially when we are in, in workplaces. We, we think that, okay, we are smarter than, you know, other people and all that. But see, we can only succeed if God is with us. Amen? So we have to always think, okay, whenever we are doing, going to do something, that is, is this what God wants me to do? Otherwise, let's not do it. Because what we do is we worry too much about our own life and our successes and our, uh, you know, um, our finances and all that kind of stuff. That, that, that's, that's the worry everybody has. But what God is, or through this Sam, God is telling us this morning is that He is our good shepherd. He knows every need that we have. We don't have to really worry about anything. I mean, I'm talking about myself also sometimes, you know. Where, you know, I, I've been telling pastor and, you know, some of, some of my bro uh, brothers here that, you know, I'm sometimes a little stressed out. I'm a little anxious. But God was speaking to me also while I was preparing this that, hey, He knows what we need. Every step of our way, He's going to lead us. You know, we don't have to worry about anything that is, that is um, ahead of us. I know maybe, you know, some of us are thinking about our college, some, uh, our job, you know, what is going to happen, you know, whether we'll get the right job. Any of those worries, I want you to let go. Don't, don't worry about anything in life. Because uh, he, he is our Good Shepherd. He will take care of every need that we have in our life. Um, while I was um, reading this, this psalm, um, uh, one of the, uh, you know, um, songwriters that came to my mind is um, J.V. Uh, Peters. I don't know how many of you know J.V. Peters. Now, he was one, of, I, I think, if we were taking psalms now, like right now, J.V. Peter would be one of the psalm writers in the Bible. He's such a good, good writer. He's a good, a good singer. So I want to end this uh, message with a song. We can all stand up and sing this song. Let's all sing together and uh, uh, end this our psalm's reading. Unnambacha vairiyin Kandin munbil padarade Unnambacha vairiyin Kandin munbil padarade Kandin mani pol kakum karangel Ninne moodi marachille Kandin mani pol kakum karangel Ninne moodi marachille Enni enni sthudhi kyuvaan Enna millatta krubagalinna Inne yolam tanbhujathal Enne thangiya namame Inne yolam tanbhujathal Enne thangiya namame Nina kedirai varum Yeah.
much. And may God bless us and uh, keep us under his care. And uh, may God bless us with these words.